Writing style, like other forms of style, isn't something you just have. It's achieved through inspiration, imitation, practice, and making it your own. Finding and evolving your writing style is one of the most important things about being a writer because it's your voice. It's what people are going to recognize you by, and it's why we like certain authors. It's not just about a story, it's about how you tell it. So I've already published one book, Thick as Blood, available on Amazon and Kindle, and I'm currently working on my second novel. Writing is something I've always done. You know, telling stories has always been fun for me. But only recently have I concentrated more on my style. Because even though it is something that evolves, you know, naturally, you only really capture your voice once you're aware of it. For example, working through Thick as Blood, I've come to realize that I myself write not too wordy. You know, I'm really big on characters and dialogue and action versus long descriptions and fluffy, nice words. You know, I'm kind of blunt and get right down into it. My stories are really character driven and I didn't fully understand that until I took a step back and looked at my book as a whole and looked at my previous writing and realized that it's always been like that. Because I wasn't really aware of it, I wasn't able to play up my strengths and take advantage of my style. Which brings me to my first piece of advice, which is look at your first drafts. At least in my case, I know that I gravitate towards what I know best the first time around writing something because what I'm good at is always the easiest to put down on the page. So if you're stuck or you don't really know where to start about going about trying to figure out your style and you know your voice and everything, I would look at your first draft because I feel like that's a really good indicator of your voice and the elements that you choose to drive your story. My second piece of advice is to look at the books you are naturally drawn to and look at your favorite books. Do they have anything in common? Are there similarities between that author's writing style and yours? How about genres and themes? You know, imitation is the best form of flattery, they say. And even if you're like subconsciously, you know, find that you're writing a lot like this one author, it's because you like them and you admire their work. And you know, that's part of style. It's taking something that somebody else already has, twisting it and making it your own and letting yourself grow and evolve off of that path. And it's okay if you write completely differently than some of your favorite books or authors. Most of my favorites have a similar way of storytelling like I do, but I gotta say my number one favorite book of all time, the author and I are just like on completely different planes. Like we don't write similarly at all. But it's still my favorite book because, you know, diversity is good. My third piece of advice, which is pretty obvious, but you know, just gotta say it, you've gotta practice. You know, it's not gonna be perfected um, in one day. It's not gonna be perfected in one book, one piece of writing. It's something that you're gonna consciously have to work on for probably the rest of your life because it's always gonna be growing and changing as you grow and change as a person. And besides just simply writing out your novel, your short story, or whatever it is you do, I think journals and writing prompts are a really good way to exercise the mind. And the best part about writing a journal or keeping a book of writing prompts is that nobody is ever going to see them unless you show them. You know, you don't need to worry about other people judging you by them, or you don't need to restrict your own mind thinking, well, somebody's gonna read this later, I can't actually write what I'm feeling, you know? So like those weird thoughts that come to you, or you know, if you need to vent, or you're angry, or you're upset about something, writing down things that you would never actually say in real life is a mentally healthy thing to do, in my opinion. And I'm about to show you something that is going to prove my point exactly, so hold on. This container is full of journals and unfinished stories and ideas and things that no one has ever seen or read and honestly half of it I haven't gone back to since the moment I wrote them. So let's take a look. Oh jeez. Alright. Ooh! Here it is. Um, oh, okay. Well first of all, this is my printed out manuscript for Thick as Blood. Oh god. I've also got journals, like... This was from college. This was also from college. Just like writing daily prompt things. I've got stuff in here from 2007, 2008. Just uh, for some reason I wrote a story in the middle of the third sections of this one. Nothing in the front section. Nothing in the third, but the middle one is full of a random story I wrote. I don't know, I didn't even... Um, date it. Binder. Let's see what's in here. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah. It's just like full of paper. Because I was in middle school at a time where nobody really had computers. You know, you had to write out everything. Um, 
and I wrote out everything. Like 60 pages of this story, 30 pages of that, another 30 pages of that. I don't even, I don't know. I, got, I wrote down like some dreams in here. Don't know why. June 14th dream. June 20th. A random piece of a story. Probably all out of order. Something from when I was 11 years old. Oh, look at this font. Oh my lord. This one's called School, age 11. Actually, I remember this. This was one of the first like story stories that I ever really wrote. It was for school. Look, remember like yellow paper when you would write stuff on yellow paper? Oh my gosh, this is so old. I did not date this. I have no idea when this was from. But I remember this was like one of the first things that I was like really proud of. College stuff, mixing with stuff from like the third grade. This binder has a lot of uh, stories in it. I was 13. I wrote like this four part giant book thing that was so utterly horrible. But me and my friends like read it and stuff like that. So my point is. You should never only write with the intention of people reading it because otherwise you're not going to grow very much as a writer. Writing is something that should always first and foremost be done for yourself. Just like any other form of art, it's a way of expression and it's a way of exploring your own mind and your reaches and things that drive you. Out of all of this stuff, Thick as Blood and a story, a short story that got published because I won this writing contest for college are the only things that like anybody who I don't know has ever read. And all of the practice that I gained throughout the years, all of the journals and the stories built up and combined, it just helped me to create something that I felt comfortable sharing with the world. And all of that stuff has gotten my writing style to where it is today to a point where I'm comfortable with it and I've looked at it critically, I've looked at myself critically and consciously aware of it so I can continue to work on it and evolve it and shape it into whatever it is going to be shaped into because I have a feeling it's going to change from now until I stop writing. So I hope this video helped you at least a little bit in trying to figure out where you are in the process of figuring yourself out as a writer. And also as a reminder that it is really hard to be perfect, especially at writing. Anything creative, it is very hard to be perfect and no one really is perfect. Everyone has just traveled down their own path and has gotten to a point where they are comfortable with themselves enough to share their artwork or creations with the world. On that note, I'm going to leave you here today. All of the links to my stuff will be down below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.